Greetings from Riverside United Church. I'm Paul Dillman, the minister here, and this is the scripture reflection and hymn video for Thanksgiving weekend 2021. And I do want to take a moment to offer some thanks because next Sunday we are shifting to having some in-person worship. And so that will be available on YouTube, but not till after the Sunday service. So I just want to take a moment to thank, give thanks for this method of delivery of, of uh, worship. Uh, back in March 2020, um, we were scrambling to figure out what to do. And uh, one member of the congregation, John, told me that he was interested in learning a little bit about video editing. And so 68 Sunday productions later, I think he's learned some things and we've all learned some things. And so we give thanks to him and also to David for the PowerPoint slides uh, that have helped us enhance our scripture readings to the 46 different people from the congregation who have read scripture for these productions, and to all the musicians uh, in the congregation and from other places and congregations who have been very generous, allowing us to use audio recordings of the music that we choose at the end of these reflections. So thank you. So as we gather today, we give thanks and we give thanks for this land that we live on and acknowledge that it is the unsurrendered, unceded land of the Algonquins. We give thanks for the opportunity to be a community of faith and to figure out what that means in this COVID time. And so as we gather virtually, we light our candle reminding us that we do gather with purpose. And that purpose is to focus on the light and love of God known to us in Jesus Christ. And we light our rainbow candle, reminding us and proclaiming to all our commitment as a community of faith to be an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada. So as we prepare in worship now, we hear our scripture reading and Patricia, our student in ministry, is going to read a reading from the book of Exodus. Today's scripture passage is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining." And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, 
there was on the surface of the wilderness a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, an omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who had gathered much had nothing left over, and those who had gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. This is the word of God. Let us pray. God of life, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts Lead us to deeper understanding of you and the love you call us to live. Amen. So the reflection today is entitled, The Manna Path. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that the book discussion group here at Riverside was reading and then going to be discussing the book, The Salt Path by Rainer Wynne. I did finish the book in time, and I'm glad that I did. And it's a nonfiction account of a journey that Rainer and her husband Moth took along the southwest coast path in England. Moth had been diagnosed with a terminal disease, and they had lost their home due to some unfortunate legal challenges with a neighbor. So without a home, they set out to walk this trail. And the book tells of the various experiences and encounters that came along the path. One of the aspects of that journey was food insecurity. They did not know where the next day's meal or nourishment would come from. Every couple of weeks, some government assistance was deposited in their account, but when they were able to access their account through a banking machine, the, the account never seemed to have as much as they expected. Along the salt path, the weather was variable, the food was intermittent, and they were able to process a lot of reality that they were experiencing. It was a time of reshaping their identity. When we were discussing the book, one of the realizations that I had was that I really can't think of a time when I worried if I would have daily bread. Usually, I have choices about what to eat, not if I will eat. And I realize that such a reality is a part of the privilege that I have. So I try to remember that when somebody calls to the church looking for help with food. I try to remember that as I recognize the very different realities and paths that people live. On this weekend of Thanksgiving, I am thankful for the abundance of harvest and yet also realize that the abundance is not known by all. Within the next 10 days or so, there are also days designated as World Food Day and the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. And so we are invited to remember those who do not have daily bread. The Israelites in our reading today were worried about where their next meal would come from. And so they grumble and complain to Moses. Remember Moses? Last week in our continuing narrative, he was being called through a burning bush, and then he had tried to explain to God that maybe there was somebody better for bringing the task of the Israelites out of Egypt and into freedom. Well, Moses is still in the story, and so we know he lost that argument. And since last week's episode, Moses has gone to Egypt, Talk to the Pharaoh. After several plagues, Pharaoh relents and the people cross the Red Sea into freedom. Moses' sister Miriam leads the singing and rejoicing. And then about six weeks later, we hear that the reality of the wilderness walking is setting in. 
And so they're complaining about the lack of food, grumbling about Moses' leadership. They get nostalgic for the good old days back in Egypt and wish that the path would go back to that time instead of forward to this place of covenant promise. The story is laid out in a way that where we kind of feel for Moses, because leadership can be tough. Promise and possibility is tough competition to the memory of nostalgic comfort, especially when the words of complaint have been drowned out by the grumbling of their empty stomachs. So Moses has another conversation with the holy, and the promise of manna is offered. Manna is a bread-like substance that is promised to be available each day. The story includes some rather detailed instructions about collecting the manna daily with the provision that twice as much be available on the day before the Sabbath. In accompanying verses, there's a promise of evening quails, and then in chapter 17, the complaint of thirst is addressed as water gushes forth from the rock. In the wilderness, amidst the experience of scarcity, God offers an economy of sufficiency. And so the Israelites walk the manna path in trust. Now we can imagine that not everyone was happy. It was not life happily lived ever after. But this gift and experience of freedom took some more walking to sort out. Their identity as the people of God needed some more shaping and reflecting. And one of the next episodes in the Exodus story is the giving of the Ten Commandments. The Exodus lasts for a long time, 40 years, and Moses, along with some of the other members of the community, don't even get to see that goal, the Promised Land. But they keep walking. And with each month and year, renewed identity is shaped. The Exodus story is one of the great narratives of Hebrew scripture, and it offers a template for understanding the human quest to find identity and purpose. It can take a while, even a lifetime, to live into the depth and possibility of the gift and meaning of freedom. The paths of our lives include various curves and challenges as we adjust to new conditions and realities. Along the way, Do we sense the daily gift of holy presence and love? Does the prayer, give us each day our daily bread, come alive in our hearts and souls? We are all invited to walk the manna path. These 19 months of COVID have been a wilderness experience in so many ways. We've lived in unfamiliar territory. We haven't been in control. We have needed to find new paths of connecting and of relating, and our sense of identity has been challenged. And while it may feel more like captivity than freedom, it has been a time of charting a new course, and it has reminded us that our lives are interwoven. In our vulnerability, some of the unheard voices have spoken up and been heard. We have recognized what is essential, and we've developed some appreciation for some underappreciated roles and tasks in our society. Leadership has been important, and some of the most effective response has come when health officials have been given the trust to lead. As we celebrate our second Thanksgiving along the COVID path, what have been some of the glimpses of daily bread or manna that nourish the walking? What new insights have shaped who we are? How has our perspective and understanding of ourselves and of the world grown or deepened? This has been a tough time, but we also recognize that many tough paths are walked in this world. Over the past few days, I've heard interviews with persons who have fled Afghanistan, and I can only imagine the tough path physically and mentally that they have walked. 
we continue to process all the dynamics in our country as we seek truth and reconciliation with our indigenous neighbors and recognize the very different experiences of living in this land. The paths of grief, of anxiety, of de depression, of PTSD are challenging and often so isolating. And I know that the path of life is very different, that my path of life is very different than someone who is homeless, searching for food and sleeping in a shelter tonight. So as we ponder this Exodus story and our varied realities and contexts, there are a couple of points of wisdom that are offered. And one of those is to reflect on this economy of sufficiency that is offered in this story, because we live in a world where the economy of scarcity is the dominant model. When we think that there's a scarcity of something, then we're tempted to greed and to hoard all that we can get. Through COVID, we've seen that dynamic with certain items. What was it? Toilet paper, flour, yeast, mason jars, etc. The supply chains are still readjusting to various changes. But what happens when we believe that there's a limited supply of respect, of trust, of dignity, of love? The human soul can get lost and driven by fear and arrogance pretty quickly. The gift of manna daily discouraged hoarding and promoted a cooperative response to the daily provisions. There was enough for all. How can that sense of sufficiency displace our fear of scarcity? Because on the manna path, there is no limit of love, or of respect, or of dignity, or of possibility, or imagination. How can our gratitude invite us into humility and deeper understanding of our responsibility amidst our differing levels of privilege? The second point of wisdom is that the journey is forward-looking, and it can be very tempting to want to go back to Egypt. We can spend a lot of nostalgic energy on remembering the good old days. But Egypt was a place of slavery. The good old days aren't as good as we may remember. Amidst this pandemic time, it's natural to say, when we get back to normal. But we will move into a new normal. And we don't know what that will be. We move towards a new normal with worship next week in person, virtually, in the blend of the two. And I don't have it all figured out yet what that will mean. But we'll sort it out as it unfolds. We move forward into promise and possibility, guided by our experience, knowledge, traditions, and learnings from the past. But we move forward with the hope of living in the present as a people being led, as we find life-sustaining bread along the path of our lives. We are on the manna path, living each day in trust that we may find enough bread, know enough love, live enough hope, so that we experience the sense of sufficiency that may even spill over into abundance. So as we live this day on the manna path of faith, may we cherish the blessing and glimpses of God's gifts of wonder, love, and hope. And may we offer thanks to God, not just these days of Thanksgiving weekend, but may all days prompt our gratitude. Thanks be to God. Amen.